Hey guys, I'm just going to start this video with an apology that the Midweek Mystery is late this week. I know it's late. I'm sorry, I'm a very stressed human being right now. I just, I can't do life right now. <laughs> like, I'm really struggling. Like, I'm moving into my new flat, but we're painting the flat currently. I never want to see, smell, hear the word paint ever again. I'm losing the will to live. I've got to build so much IKEA furniture. I've spent more money this week than I have ever in my entire life. Like, I literally want to cry over how much money I'm spending. I've got to sort out my council tax. How do I do that? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. So, just stressed. So stressed. Um, yeah. Anyway, so basically, apologies that these videos are late and very sporadic at the moment. I will get back into regularly scheduled videos, but for the moment, God knows what's happening with my life, pretty much. I don't know. Do you know? I have no idea. Um, so this week's midweek mystery is going to be a Jane Doe case. So I'm going to start this one with a warning. This is a Jane Doe case on a child. Um, it's quite a graphic one if you aren't into mysteries about children or children that have come to harm, anything like that, then I would recommend not watching this one. But I think it's very important, more important, because she's a child, you want to get her story out there and find her name because she has been buried without a name and to this day nobody knows who this young girl was. Now on the 28th of February 1983, the body of a young African American girl was found in the basement of a house in St. Louis, Missouri. She was found by two people whose car had broken down outside of the property. So they had gone into the property to find a pipe or something to fix their car. And when they lit a cigarette in the basement, enough light came off of the lighter to allow them to see the body of a young girl on the floor. She was found naked apart from a yellow jumper that she was wearing. She also had her wrists bound in red and white nylon rope behind her back. She was found lying on her stomach and she was also decapitated and to this day, although her body's been found, her head never has been. So the police originally believed the victim to be a prostitute until they actually rolled the body over and saw that this was not a body of a woman, this was a body of a young girl who had not yet gone through puberty. Further examinations concluded that she was indeed between 8 to 11 years old and I have seen a lot of conflicting reports on this. I've seen some reports say that she was raped and some other sources say that she wasn't sexually abused in any way, so I'm not entirely sure what to believe there. Of course, this was a case a long time ago and there's very limited information on the internet about this. Um, I would like to believe personally that she wasn't abused, um, but some sources say she was, so take that with a pinch of salt. Her head, which like I said has never been found, was severed cleanly off. It looked like it had just been cut off with maybe a sharp like cooking knife. She had red nail varnish on her fingers, which I think is such like a brutal sort of depiction of her body like she was a child she had her fingernails painted a red color she'd obviously gone to the like effort to do this or maybe a loved one had painted her nails for her and she was also between four foot ten and five foot six which is obviously a large height range for this child i'm not entirely sure how they came up with that range because i'm not sure how big they thought her head would have been uh, but they said with her head she would have been between four foot ten and five foot six and the coroner ruled that she was killed by strangulation, so she wasn't killed by the decapitation. And that obviously came afterwards, she was killed by strangulation a few days before her body was found. All the possible DNA was collected from her body and of course her body was searched. She had no like distinctive marks or scars on her body, which in a lot of Jane Doe cases is what eventually leads to their identity being found. It's a lot harder when there's no distinctive marks on the body to sort of describe who she is to people and especially when this girl doesn't have a head they have no idea what she actually looks like. There were a lot of girls missing in the area at the time and each one of them has been ruled out as being this little Jane Doe. She was finally laid to rest in a cemetery in December 1983 so 10 months after she was found and the police were so desperate to find out who this girl was they had no leads whatsoever they actually sent the yellow jumper she was found in to a psychic. A psychic who said if they sent her the jumper she would be able to tell them who this girl was. Now, of course, that jumper got lost in the post. The psychic claimed she never received it, and that was that. They've never found the jumper again. Possibly the biggest piece of evidence in this case, or the only piece of evidence in this case, is that yellow jumper the little girl was wearing. After 20 years, the case was laid to rest, and the police obviously did actively search 
for this little girl's identity and her murderer, but nothing was ever found, it was pretty much just put on a back burner. That is until the summer of 2013 when her body was exhumed, loads of police and volunteers spent months and months searching the cemetery to find this little girl's body. Um, they dug up a lot of graves until they actually found her, it turns out that a headstone had been placed for little Jane Doe, but it had been placed in the wrong spot in the cemetery. So these volunteers spent a lot of their time trying to search for her body in here, and eventually they found it. So obviously this is 2013, 20 years later, and science has got a lot better in this time. So the people basically wanted to assume her body to do more tests and see if they could figure out any more clues from her body. And that is exactly what the scientists managed to do. They examined her DNA, the minerals found in her bones, and they've actually managed to narrow down where she was from to just 10 states. So obviously I'm not a scientist, so I don't really know how they are able to do this, but I think it's something to do with the minerals in the water that she drank when she was alive, which led scientists to believe that she was from one of 10 states she either lived there her entire life or pretty much her entire life. And I'm going to read out all these states to you now. They're all southeastern. So the 10 states are Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Now you might notice that Missouri is none of these 10 states that I've just mentioned, meaning that chances are she wasn't from the state in which she was found or in which she was killed. And that is all that scientists really managed to find from her body. However, this is monumental. You've taken this little girl who could have come from anywhere in the entire world and you've managed to narrow down her place of birth or the place where she lived the majority of her life to one of just 10 states. That is pretty amazing they can just do that with science. Little Jane Doe has now been reburied in Cavalry Cemetery in St. Louis. Um, she has actually been buried in a garden called the Garden of Innocence for people who don't have a name. And really there are zero clues as to who Little Jane Doe was and who murdered her and why she was murdered. However, there are a lot of things that you are able to ascertain from her body when she was found. However, there are some theories which I'm going to throw out there. Let me know which theory you think is the most likely. Now, from her body, it seemed that she was a pretty well cared for girl. She was malnourished. She had no scars or marks really on her body, which led authorities to believe that she was like, well cared for. She had a loving family, like. A lot of children who do go missing or whose bodies are found, you find a lot of marks on their bodies to suggest that they are mistreated in their life. But this little girl was, apart from like, obviously being decapitated and you know, being dead, was in pretty good condition. Her nails were painted, which suggests that there was somebody in her life who cared for her and wanted to paint her nails and like loved her enough to buy her nail varnish to do that. So why has nobody come forward and looked for this obviously well cared for and well loved little girl? Now obviously the most obvious point here is that maybe her mum or her guardian, whoever loved her, like maybe her entire family, were also murdered. Um, and this is a big possibility because that would explain why nobody's come forward searching for her. However, it is a little bit strange that if this is the case, their bodies were placed separately um, and that the other body has never been found. So if another body was found, I'm sure they would have run DNA tests and managed to connect the two. Um, and they just haven't been able to do that. But that is definitely a possibility. I'm gonna explain why nobody's come forward. Another possibility is maybe her parents, her guardians, got involved in drugs. Um, now, I think once you get involved in drugs, it's a very quick decline, which could explain why this little girl was still very well cared for. And um, maybe her parents or her guardian got involved in drug sort of world and maybe the little girl got hurt as collateral damage in this case. And it would also explain why the parents didn't want to come forward because they were involved in these dodgy dealings. Another possibility is that maybe the girl was in the foster system and she got lost in the system and maybe nobody has ever noticed that she went missing. However this is very unlikely, government files are obviously very secure you would like to think when it comes to children and foster children eventually maybe even if they didn't notice like initially i'm sure eventually somebody would have realized this girl was missing and they don't know where she is and they would have put that forward um, but that's obviously never happened and another possibility is that maybe this was the 80s it obviously was the 80s and they didn't have social media they didn't have communication like we do nowadays 
if the girl was from one of the other 10 states or any other state in America, maybe somewhere else in the world, there's a possibility that the news of little Jane Doe didn't travel to these other states and maybe like parents were looking for her, parents were searching and calling the police but it was another state, maybe the other side of the country and it's just never been connected. It is a possibility, it's an unlikely possibility because you would think the police would do a good job at being able to reunite these but I think it's quite obvious that the girl wasn't from Missouri where her body was found. I do think with all the latest technology, all the social media nowadays, obviously back in 2013 this would have been a big news, especially in sort of the states around Missouri and in Missouri. Um, so you would think somebody would have come forward then, but I don't know, maybe they've passed away in 20 years. I just think this is such a sad case because nobody should be buried without an identity. Who was looking for this little girl? Somebody clearly loved her while she was alive um, and I think it's just very sad. I don't do many Jane Doe cases in this series but if you enjoyed this please let me know and I'll definitely look into more Jane and John Doe cases to tell you about. Um, but I figured this was something a little bit different, probably short and sweet, there's really not that information on this case. I think it's important to get her name out there because she must, she had a name. She definitely had a name at some point. So as always, if you enjoyed this, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Comment down below, talk to each other, talk to me, any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and make sure you click that bright red subscribe button down below. And I post these videos every Wednesday, pretty much. I know this isn't up on a Wednesday, but I'll get back into that, I'm sure. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.